Hello students, once again. Today, let us see some factors that affect the rates of reactions. In lower classes, we have already learned that there are so many factors that affect the rate of a reaction. For example, nature of the reactants in the products, the presence of sunlight, or the size, the particle size of the reactants. All these are factors that affect the rates of reactions. Today, we will discuss in detail two factors that affect rates of reaction. One of them is concentration. Now, for most of the chemical reactions, it is found that the rate is increased when the concentration of the reactant is increased. So, on increasing the concentration of reactants, the rate of reactions increases. So, this concentration dependence of rates of reactions is given by an equation which is called as the rate equation or which is also called as rate expression. For example, if we have a reaction in which a reactant A turns into product, then rate is found to be directly proportional to concentration of the reactant. So rate is proportional to the concentration of A. Rate, therefore, will be equal to a constant of proportionality, which we write as K, into A, the concentration of the reactant. This constant of proportionality, it is called as the rate constant. So here, if we have only one reactant, we write the rate like this, and this is known as the rate expression or the rate law. If we have two reactants, suppose A and B combine to form one or two products, they are just one product is formed, then rate, remember it does not depend on the concentration of the product, it depends on the concentration of the reactants. In this case, we have two reactants, rate will be dependent on the concentration of both A and B. So rate is proportional to the product of concentration of the reactants. And therefore, rate will be equal to the constant K into concentration of A and B. This will be the rate law or the rate expression or rate equation for this reaction. Now here, as I said, K is called as the rate constant. So how can we define this rate constant? If concentration of reactants A and B are one mole each, just one mole each, then rate becomes equal to the rate constant into one mole each, one into one. So K, the rate constant equal to the rate. From here, we give the definition of the rate constant. It is defined as the rate of the reaction in which concentration of all the reacting species is one mole per liter each. Whether it's two reactants or just a single reactant or even three, if the concentration of the reactants is one each only, then we'll get the product one only. So the rate constant becomes equal to the rate. And therefore, from here, we define the rate constant as the rate of the reaction in which the molar concentration of all the reacting species is unity, that is one each. Now, there are some important things to remember on this uh, factor that is concentration that affects the rate of a reaction. Let us see them one by one. The first one is that the exponents of the concentration terms may or may not be the same as their stoichiometric coefficients in the balance chemical equation. Now, in many reactions, Suppose we have a reaction where A moles of A combines with B moles of B to give C moles of C and D moles of D. We will find many reactions like this where the stoichiometric coefficients are different. Now, in this reaction, A and B are the reactants and C and D are the products. So if we are to write the rate of the rate law for this equation or for this reaction, the rate law will be equal to 
rate which is given by K into concentration of A into concentration of B, the product of concentration of the reactants. Now, in these cases, A is raised to a power X and B is raised to a power Y. This exponents, that is the powers to which these concentration terms are raised, may or may not be equal to these stoichiometric coefficients. In certain reactions, x may be equal to a, y may be equal to b. But in other reactions, this may not be equal. That is what this first point is about. Exponents of the concentration terms may or may not be the same as their stoichiometric coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. Let us see some examples here. Nitric oxide combines with oxygen to form NO2, nitrogen dioxide. Here, rate for this reaction is given by K into concentration of nitric oxide raised to power 2 into concentration of oxygen raised to power 1 only. So in this reaction, these powers, the exponents, they are equal to the stoichiometric coefficients. But in another reaction where chloroform reacts with chlorine to give carbon tetrachloride and HCl, here rate is equal to K into concentration of chloroform into concentration of chlorine raised to power 1 by 2. In the balanced chemical equation, the stoichiometric coefficient of chloroform is 1. So here it is raised to power 1. Here, the coefficient of chlorine is also 1, but in the rate law, chlorine, concentration of chlorine is raised to power 1 by 2, not 1. So here, the power of this concentration term is not equal to the stoichiometric coefficient in the balanced chemical equation. So in certain reactions, they may be equal like this, or in certain other reactions, this may not be the same. That is the first thing we have to remember. Another point is, if we have a reaction like this again, A moles of A reacting with B moles of B to give C moles of C and D moles of D, then rate can be expressed by using the change in concentration of any one of these reactants or products. So rate will be equal to the change in concentration of A by change in concentration of change in time multiplied by, not multiplied by, divided by this coefficient A. And this also will be equal to K into concentration of A raised to power X, which may or may not be equal to A. Or in terms of concentration of B also, rate will be equal to decrease in concentration of B by change in time divided by the coefficient here. And this will be equal to K into concentration of B raised to power Y, which may or may not be equal to the coefficient B. In terms of concentration of C, we can write change in concentration of C by change in time divided by the coefficient C, which will be equal to K into concentration of C raised to power a power P, which may be equal to or not equal to C. And for the last product, D, rate will be the change in concentration of D by change in time. Here, for the products, we will not write this negative signs because the concentration will increase. 1 by D, which will be equal to K into concentration of D raised to power Q, which may or may not be equal to the coefficient D. So these are the equations that we use 
to derive the rate of reaction. And these equations are called as differential equations. Remember, this is from the definition of rate of reaction, and this is from the rate law or the rate expression. The third point to remember is that some of the powers of the concentrations of reactants in the rate law expression is called order of that reactions. Let us try to understand it with this example. If we have a reaction whose rate is given by rate equal to K into A raised to power X and B raised to power Y. For this, the concentration of reactant A is raised to power X and for B, concentration term is raised to power Y. Some of the powers of this concentration terms, that is X plus Y, gives us the order of the reaction. So order of a reaction is just the sum of the powers to which the concentration terms are raised in the rate law expression. Let us see another example to understand this better. If we have a reaction in which rate is expressed as K into A raised to power one and concentration of B raised to power one by two, then order of this reaction will be equal to sum of the powers. A here is raised to power one. So one plus the power of B, which is one by two. This will give us three by two, which is a fractional order. So order of a reaction may sometimes be zero. Sometimes it may be one, it may be two, it may be three, or sometimes it may be fractional also like this. Now the fourth point to remember, a zero order reaction means that rate of reaction is independent of concentration of the reactants. There are certain reactions, of course they are very rare, but that some reactions, uh, in these reactions, the rate does not depend on concentration of the reactants. Such kind of reactions are called as zero order reactions. A first order reaction is one whose rate depends on only one concentration variable. And a second order reaction is one whose rate depends on two concentration variables and so on. So if we have a general reaction in which A turns into products, then if this reaction is a zero order reaction, then rate will be equal to K into A raised to power zero because rate for this zero order reactions do not depend on concentration of the reactants. So here, the rate expression or the rate law for this zero order reaction will be rate equal to K into concentration of the reactant A raised to power zero. However, if it is a first order reaction, then rate will be equal to K into A raised to power one. This is for zero order reaction. And this one is for first order reaction. Likewise, if it is a second order reaction, then rate will be equal to K into A raised to power two for the second order reaction. It is important to know how to calculate the units for this rate constant K. As I mentioned before, rate constant is the rate of a reaction in which the concentration of all the reacting species is unity H. So let us see how we can calculate the units for this rate constant. Let us start with a zero order reaction. Let us say for a zero order reaction in which A turns into product B. The rate will be equal to K into A raised to power zero since it is a zero order reaction. So any term raised to power zero will be equal to one. Therefore, this term becomes one. And therefore, K, the rate constant, equal the rate of the reaction. 
Now, rate of a reaction is the change in concentration. The change in concentration by change in time. Here, since we are calculating the unit, we'll just use concentration, and here we'll use time. So K equal to concentration by time. Concentration, the unit of concentration is mole per liter. And time, if we are using this I unit, time will be expressed in seconds. So second, this we can write as mole per liter per second. If time is expressed in minutes, then it will be mole per liter per minute. These are the units for the rate constant for a zero order reaction. Let us see this for a first order reaction. Just consider a general reaction A turning to P, which is a first order reaction. Rate for this first order reaction will be equal to K into A raised to power one. So here A is raised to power one, therefore rate will be equal to K into A. K therefore will be equal to rate divided by concentration of A. Once again, rate is concentration by time. And here we have concentration of A, which we'll just write as concentration. So we can cut this, we get K equal to the rate constant equal to one by time, which we can bring up as per time. So if time is expressed in seconds, then this will be per second. If it is expressed in minutes, it will be per minute. Therefore, unit of rate constant for a first order reaction will be per second or per minute. Let us see this for a second order reaction also. If A turning to B, if this reaction is a second order reaction, then rate will be equal to K into A raised to power two. So K will be equal to rate divided by concentration of A raised to power two. Rate is given by concentration divided by time. And here we have concentration squared. So this we can cut. We get one by time into concentration, which is mole per liter. So if we bring this up, this will come up as liter, this will come up as per mole, and this will come up as per time. So liter per mole per time will be the unit of the rate constant for a second order reaction. That is all the time we have for today. Let us continue in the next class.